Hello everybody, welcome to CCL Season 51 second round match between Tempest Soul and his Dark Elves and Rick Reckless and his Pro Elves. Lots of Elves this cup. Um, Tempest Soul is down a bribe. No, he's not down a bribe. But they got a get the ref kickoff result. So the even TV teams. Because Tempest Soul has induced somebody, right? He has a he has a play here, so he's he's got a mercenary lineman. So Tempest Soul was 100 TV down, and he induced a Merc lineman. He bought an assassin, and induced a Merc lineman. Oh wow! There you go, instant cast for Rick. Money well spent on that Merc lino. So this is an interesting elf game here because we've got two teams and one tackle. There is a tackler somewhere. Honestly. There you go, Rick's got a tackler there. With jump up and not diving tackle, bizarrely. Um, and a dirty player sneaky git. So yeah, Rick's got Rick's got two super players. He's got Zakara, strength four, range five, leap. Lovely, Blodge. And he's got a Natty, Jammy Blodger. Move 10, Sprint Sure Feet. No, not Sure Feet, but Sprint. That's the only one you need. Move 10, Sprint, Rodge. So yeah, two great players for Rick. Mighty Blow, not so good without Tackle. Um, two Guarders, good. Dirty player Sneaky get not great. Uh, whereas Tempest Soul's got a much like much more rounded team. With these, uh, these Blitzers, Blodge Step, Diamond Tackle. Lovely, lovely Blitzers. And a star player of his own with this Edge 6 Witch Elf. Um, leap, Wrestle, Dauntless. So, interesting. So obviously the dirty, the, the bribe is definitely advantage Rick because Rick has a dirty player sneaky git guy. Um, but Tempest Soul does love to foul. <laughs> Also, Rick has the more valuable players in terms of absolute best players. He has the two best players. But there's a lot of good players for him to foul as well. Stuns him. Fouls him. Lovely. <laughs> no AV break. Diced again. This is very weak here, isn't it? But he's got players to shore it up. Barely. Alright, he's just making a cage. Oh, I, I hate this cage up here. I would definitely, uh, I would definitely blitz, blitz this guarder. And... Get men in front of the cage here. Oh, no, there's the natty. Okay, yeah, blitz the natty. Blitz the natty and foul it. I don't know. Oh, wow. Wow, that's very aggro. That's very... I mean, that's very Tempest Soul. That's a very Tempest Soul play. I think I would have just blitzed this guarder and then, you know, stood in front and tried to actually defend. But, you know, what's the point? What's the point in doing that when Rick just automatically wins because he's got a natty? So, I do quite like this play from Tempest Soul. You almost can't win as long as this natty's around, so... Rick said the, the odds of the one turn were about 50%, which... Do you know what? He could be right, but it still doesn't feel like that, does it? It feels like they will score the one turn. <laughs> mm, 43% it says here. Oh, there you go. Probably going to be about that. Mm. 
I mean, you don't have to assume it fails, Dadel. If like you can definitely just rely on your net. you can just rely on playing to that out, can't you? Plus, you've got to pick up the ball and pass it to him. Maybe you don't have to pass it to him. Maybe you can just hand it off to him. Depends though, doesn't it? Yeah, chance of getting blitzed, etc. Reduce it by more. So... <laughs> yeah, Jilly failing to <laughs> failing, failing to type Samba. <laughs> Good old exclamation point Samba. So there you go, there's the bribe gone. But I mean I think it's definitely the correct decision to foul this guy because it's it's too high anyway. Whatever the odds of him scoring are, it's too damn high. So I like fouling there. Got in the way a little bit. I remember that. I remember this uh, turn. I would have definitely blitzed this guy and got the team up to here, one hundred million percent. I actually hated this turn from Rick. Like, it, okay, it gets him to use the the dirty player sneaky kit. Um, and, you know, this is a really good player to remove for match equity, sure. But for for the drive itself, like he's only one player up. And OK, he's got the ball in an edge five. You know, move eight, strength four, edge five, leaper. Like, you know, scoring isn't going to be too difficult. But um, I'd much rather have a team here than a team here. You know, like, elves can get elves can get in the way. Multiple blood step diving tacklers. Um, I didn't like coming back for this. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Doesn't even try to dodge off the uh, diamond tackle there. So you can get another two assists for the foul. <laughs> Thanks, Dadle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's given that's given Temper Soul a turn to get everyone back and you know create some kind of defense now again. So again, okay it's not hard to break through defenses as else, but now you've got to do it again, you know. Kills him. Pretty good foul. And huge apple roll there for it. Flip me. But sent off. So he is exposed. So there you go. So if he wasn't sent off there, then this uh, this diamond tackle comes back here and shows everything up defensively. But Rick gets kind of lucky with that send off. That gives him... So now he does, you know, turn five, what he should have done turn four, in my opinion. Also, I would like to have gone extra square to push him back there. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't particularly like it in Sester's time. And here we go with a bribe in hand. He does the foul before he moves everybody. Their extra assists, which is totally, totally fine. Even if it fails, the ball's safe, and there's no real ball sack on at all from Temper Soul. Um, Temper Soul doesn't have any guard of his own, so he only has strength three uh, with wrestle. He does have dauntless, but still, it's. Uh, it's not. Oh, he's got one guard, but yeah, it's just getting fouled. So yeah, it's. It's. Uh, he's got two guards. I think this is very safe from Rick to do that foul first. Completely reasonable. One guy dead. One guy sent off, and that huge, huge apple. Unbelievable, Jeff. Uh, the alone is right. Oh, 
I guess, and leaps in for the 1D. Wow. And re-rolls and gets a POW! Jesus. I'd have actually pushed it out in front, and it's easy to say that now that he's caught it. But I would have put it in front because you've got that guy who can go back, I guess. I guess you've got a bigger payoff by putting it out back, but I don't know how to put it. I would have put it out the front there. He had to buy something, and I guess he thought he's up against Proil, so an assassin can do something. Save it for LOS stabbings. That was very lucky. I mean, very lucky to get the sack, wasn't it? But then also very lucky to uh, get the catch. To Zagara. And guards on either side. But the, uh, again, the elf, the witch elf could come in for a 1D again, eh? Um, this guard gets in. So that's why he brings this guy back to stop the guard, to stop the 1D. Um. I'm not sure it was necessary, but fair enough. Like, you've already just lost the ball to a 1D, and then obviously he gets the foul. And uh, now this guy at the back seems a bit relevant. Could have been once further forward, whatever. Huge foul, though. By both, by both coaches, huge fouls. Uh, killing, killing Jammy Lodger would have been horrendous. I think we sold down a lot of players now. And, uh... <laughs> probably not, Pugler. Probably not. Well, we won't. We won't have Cabal Vision for a start. This foul, unfortunately, completely seeds the, the sideline, isn't it? which is uh, not great. So we can get quite forward now. Had him here. Oh no, he's got a witch elf and you haven't got sidesteps, so I guess you've got to have him there. Of course, the defenseless guy, lovely. Gets a cows. So I mean, after that cows, it looks really good for Rick, right? Like this is the thing. This is where, this is when Volk said. Rick's chances were in the 90 odd percent. And I said, oh, that's crazy. Only 80 odd percent. But uh, it looks really good for Rick now. Th three permanent removals. Apple's gone, but he's taken nothing on 11 man teams. So that's really good, isn't it? Almost certainly going to bang it in turn eight now. And uh, yeah, looking really good. Really nice for Rick here. But I thought this was a really good turn from Tempest Soul. Um, hasn't left Rick with much to do, because of course he's got an Ad 5 Leaper and a team full of elves. But um, there was an option to go and hand off to this lineman, but it was two two pluses, two naked two pluses. So the better player is, of course, to leap and dodge with the, uh, with the ball carrier rather than hand off in GFI. But um, I might have still gone for the uh, handoff just because at least, you know, at least your wonder catcher can't die doing that. But this is this is higher odds, right? The leap and the dodge. He uses re team reroll on the leap. 
And then the skill reroll and the dodge. So Rick was rewarded for doing the statistically most likely play. <laughs> um, but I, w I would have thought about doing the handoff. Just literally because, you know, Zakara can't die on a handoff. <laughs> Which is kind of ridiculous how important he is to the team. But, you know, I think that was good. Like, you know, it was only a 2-2. Two -two. Like, it was literally only a couple of twos that Tempest Soul forced. But I thought he did well to force that even, honestly. I wasn't, I wasn't muted, uh, Pogler. It was some, some weird thing with Rick's Discord. <laughs> So, again, there is a. <laughs> I would not try to stop the one turn here. Rick's, you know, defending the one turn pretty, pretty strongly here. I wouldn't have even bothered trying to defend it. I think with movement seven and nine, edge four, with like eight players, nine, nine players, eight players, I wouldn't even try to defend this. I think it's too hard. I would only try to defend this against uh, Cole. I think any other player in the world, I'd take my chances on them scoring. Indeed, Helmy's like the problem is with the team he hasn't got much else, right? That's the thing. Rick got two supermen on this team, and not much else. Whereas Tempestor has got these three lovely blitzers, and not much else. <laughs> three lovely blitzers and this Witcher. Did he did he leave the uh, natty surfer bolt? Then uh, yes, if I'm if the blitz hadn't happened, I'd have hundred percent done it. Hundred percent. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I think that was definitely wrong from Rick to expose that. And okay, he didn't have the edge six one, but I, yeah, I would have I would have rolled all the dice to try to get the uh, to try and get the witch off there. They were talking about surfing the guard, but um, if I'd seen the natty was surfable, yeah, I would have hundred percent gone for the natty surf. So we go a Kaz there, and nothing Kaz, but hey, every little helps. Um, Rick only has eleven players, so while that is a crap player to lose, it's still a player down. There's another one gone. Yeah, I hate that from Rick and Cheerleader. I hate that. I would have def I would have definitely just gone for that surf. Like obviously <laughs> if the blitz hadn't happened. Well he hasn't got any mighty blow of his own, has he? So it is what it is. And he hasn't got any tackle. Comes back. So 10 v... No, 11... No, 9 v 10. 9 v 10. Yep, yeah, 9 v 10. It's looking pretty grim for Tempest Soul. Even if he scores, Rick just scores with his natty. <laughs> oh, I don't like the tackle on the LOS. Yep, he can't bench him, but obviously Rick has to prioritise keeping the natty safe. This is main defensive focus. <laughs> and with a riot, that's one less turn to uh, expose him. Four, stab, instant stab. What a great inducement. Well, it wasn't an inducement, was it? Just what a great player. Yeah, that's what he should do if he wasn't reckless. <laughs> A Thomas T sidestep there, lovely. <laughs> I 
Yes, was a great area. <laughs> Correct. Do you mean as dwarves or against dwarves, Herd and Hop? As dwarves. Um, I don't know. Is it low TV? Do you have guard yet? If you don't have a bunch of guard and they're very slow, bit tricky, bit tricky at low TV. We got a pretty bad matchup against uh, against like the actual bash teams, orcs, etc. Outstrength you. Yeah, once you get loads of guard, then they start getting better, and they're they're really slow, so it's kind of easy to uh, to misposition and stuff. Like if you make slight mistakes, they get they get exploited pretty heavily. Gotta play like really super safe all the time. Yeah. Stab does nothing there, by the way. Yeah, don't overcommit. Don't undercommit. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta like, you know, you gotta be pretty good to uh, to win with dwarves, funnily enough. As brainless as they seem. They're not actually that brainless. Rick getting some good value out of his tackler. I might have been tempted to put the guard in here and uh, blitz the uh, stabber. It's up to you, Clements. It's up to you. Either are good. Um, if you're going to play the team for a long time, Mighty Blow kind of gives you better long-term development um, at the you know arguable cost of worse short-term results. But you know they, they're good fishing. Like Mighty Blow is still a good skill as well. Uh, huge, huge apple there, working, keeping him on for overtime, which is best case scenario for Tempest Soul right now. For a Venger bus here, where he's got the guard in the wrong place. For a Venger bus, the idea with the Venger bus is, of course, he can come in the he can come in the rear um, for a two D. So if you have the guard at the back, then the passenger is assisting anyway. Like that's the whole point of the passenger, is that you know you would need to put somebody in to cancel the thing. So very strange that he's got the he's got the guard in the wrong place. Rick could come for this if he wants. Not going to. I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't have anything on Zakara, does he? Like, he doesn't have tackle or wrestle. Really, he really wanted to get Zakara 276 and have tackle. On. Makes him, like, so much better. He's just making a big foul. And get sent off. Not sure at 1 0 up in a pretty good spot, it's worth abandoning your defense to uh, make a big foul. But, you know, Rick does abandon his defense. <laughs> turn, turn 13. Not what I would have done.
It's funny because I liked all of the previous files, but this one just seems a bit like, you know. Again, if Zakara had tackle, then encouraging him to come here and then just leaping in and getting the ball is pretty nice, isn't it? But. So you can hit from here. You can bl block here and then leap in here for a 2D, but again, he's not gonna. No side. Oh, there is side at Blitzers. Where is Blitzers? There. Does Rick only have one blitzer? But I like this, the uh, the one turner totally protected. Hmm. I think I'd have rather put him here. Maybe. But he's still getting blitzed anyway. Yeah, I, I hated that big gang farm. I really hated that. I just think feel like it gave him too much. But then he's he's back to where he started anyway, so it looks fine now, doesn't it? The most important thing for Rick is just to keep these two safe at all times, isn't it? And he's got them for uh, overtime if necessary, and more realistic people want them. Oh, there you go, nice assassin, mate. Where'd you get him? The shit assassin shop. He's basically done nothing and been removed. Amazing. Go a bit wider here, I don't like this. Just a little bit wider from Rick. I mean, somebody else would have eaten those blisters with armor rate. Right there. <laughs> there isn't no dog to the dog. The Warhammer Fantasy Battle Assassin Shop isn't shit. Oh, wow. That was a bold choice, wasn't it? When he's got all these to move that had, like, skill reroll. Like, this could have just moved first. Didn't go through Didn't go through that square. This could have already moved as well. So he could have moved both of those first. And fair enough, he had to do that one before getting this one through. Ah, did he have to make that GFI? Could he have just stood here? I feel like he could have just stood here. But obviously that's much better. There we go, the tackler's right, oh, okay, so it's too late. The, the tackler was here. So Rick wanted to put the tackler on, you know, on the sideline. Tackle sidestep on the sideline is pretty good. Holds the sideline. And then blitz with somebody else. I like blitzing with a tackler, personally. But then, you know, you are exposing surf, but then... They've got to surf that guy and score, right? Interesting. But he comes in with a natty and then re rolls into double skulls and <laughs> KOs himself. 
<laughs> so that was about as unlucky as you can get for Rick there. Um, so there you go. Yep. Yep. But you know, there, there, there was obviously pros and cons, right? There was there was definitely pros to getting the tackle in there. Um, I just. I don't know, I think you can move the people out of the way and then just take the tackle. That's what I would prefer. But again. Because I would, I would have liked following up with him and then having a tackle. Well, to be fair, in my defence, I thought he was tackle, diving tackle. So, I would have really liked having a diving tackle on the ball, guaranteed. But he doesn't have diamond tackles, that makes him a lot worse. <laughs> that makes my play of blitzing with a tackle rope a bit worse. And Rick's play of having him over there kind of the sideline a bit better. So there you go, so the uh, the catcher stays out. So that almost kills the one turn for Rick because now he's got to manufacture three pushes versus sidesteppers. So pretty, pretty impossible I would say. Um, or fill in all these squares to get a sidestepper forward. Um, for and only eight players for Rick now, somehow. So, you know, just quietly, just quietly, somehow we've got nine versus eight against Rick. When before it was like it was 11 versus, it started 11 versus eight, didn't it, this half? And now all of a sudden, it's like, you know, everything's gone gone a bit wrong. A quick snap, even the quick snap doesn't help him here, does it? I don't think. Like it's just so hard versus the side steppers. Obviously, you have to defend with the side steppers here if you don't the soul. If you did a lazy setup, we could have definitely got the uh, definitely got the pushes versus the you know rubbish players on the other way. So he had to put the side steppers there. Yes, may maybe Rick should have set up for the for the quick snap. There is definitely an argument for that. Yeah. Because that was probably the only way he was going to do it, wasn't he? Right, right, a quick snap was the only way of scoring. So had he set up for a quick snap one turn, maybe he could have done it, maybe he could have filled all these in. It would have been really hard, though. Really hard. Maybe best not to even try. So there we go. One turner stays out. And the Dells win the toss. So... From looking completely dominant at one point, Rick, now he's only got eight players. Um, but it is eight versus eight, and the Dells have got the ball with an edge six, uh, an edge six witch elf. So unbelievable, really. Unbelievable. Anything could happen, though. Don't say it's over. <laughs> the problem is Rick just doesn't have that sacking player, does he? So it's uh, he's got a tackle and a couple of wrestlers, but you know, no one wrestle now because the wrestlers off. Uh, the, the, the problem with that is little Yoshi is that the Dells might just keep the ball out of range. Quick snap. Interesting here. Um, well, well, we'll wait until it happens. <laughs> well, yeah, no, he goes into the LOS. I would have been tempted to just get away from the LOS and uh, you know, bez down the, bez down the, you know, bez everyone down the sideline here. Blitz this guy. Make a big cage here. Guard in the way. Hope you survive the two D on the ball because he hasn't got tackle. So. I really like just pushing everyone down the sideline here. He's only got one reroll as well. That's a big, big thing. Tempest saw right. He's only got the one reroll. So I really would have just gone for that, but instead he's uh, he's gone for. They have an edge six quarterback and lob it to one of these scoring threats. Yes, it's not what I would have done. A lovely Peravil Blitz. <laughs> so 
So yeah, obviously Rick can just put um, Pro Elf catches, marking the scoring threats for unbelievable intercept chances. Also, uh, interestingly, I thought, is there even any point blitzing one of the scoring threats, right? Because you've got, they still got two. So blitzing one doesn't do a whole lot. So why it may be better to blitz the LOS here, I was thinking. I actually did quite like blitzing the LOS uh, rather than the scoring threats. So there you go, a bit of a, bit of a threat there. And <laughs> this is going to be a blitz to stab him and then uh, free up the touchdown. So here we go. Dub instant dub skulls. Into a removal. Instant pow. <laughs> Definitely got to punch the witch, even though she's got jump up. Like, got to punch her now, haven't you? Gets the cars. Beautiful, beautiful cars. So now there's only one, one scoring threat left. Um, and blitzes this guy though. I I like the one D on the uh, witch elf, and doesn't block because of the intercept chance here. If he if he blocks and pushes, or double skulls, obviously he's got nothing, whereas if you sidestep there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess you wouldn't you wouldn't have an intercept chance, right? That's the thing. If you push him there, you don't get the intercept chance. But what none of us did watching this game was count the number of squares <laughs> for the witch elf to the halfway line. And the witch elf is actually nine squares away from the halfway line. So it's actually the most super simple touchdown you could ever think of. <laughs> and I mean, you know, kind of obvious, really, when you think about it. Temper Soul obviously you had to have this guy nine in and then do the long bomb. Like, why not? Also, this is the skill is agility isn't implemented correctly in Blood Bowl three, Blood Bowl two. So Edge six is better than Edge five for throwing, and it shouldn't be. But yeah, you can just double GFI and long bomb it on a 3 plus. So there you go. And that's it. And there was Rick playing the game. And there was Jack Bull, uh, Volcayo, and myself commentating the game. And not one of us looked at how far away the Witch Elf was from the LOS. <laughs> so yes it should Pogler indeed that is indeed correct because it's not that Edge 5 is the cap on throwing Edge 6 is still the cap but agility is capped by the negative modifiers that turn it into a fumble that's the thing um, now whether it's supposed to be checked or not is a big question right because uh, who knows? Who knows what the intention was? Who knows what the intention was when they wrote the rules? Maybe they intended Edge 6 to be better at passing than Edge 5, and the way they wrote the rules, they got it wrong themselves, right? So who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe um, Blood Bowl 2 is more true to the designer's vision than the actual way the rule book is worded, but as the rules are written, um, Edge 5 is no better than Edge 6 for passing because that 3 minus 2 is a 1 and therefore a fumble. So yeah, you're not exactly caught night, right? Who's to say that the Blood Bowl 2 way is worse? It's just not rules as written, but it's thematically maybe better. Um, so there you go. Uh, congratulations to Temper Soul. It was great positioning on the Witch Elf to give him that long bomb to circumvent the uh, Pro Elf interception, which not one of the people involved <laughs> in the match other than him saw. And commiseration for Rick, uh, you know, 
he went he went from a big favourite to big underdog, right? Just in the that that blitz, really un, super unlucky to uh, get removed from it, and then to lose the toss as well. So there you go. Um, there, there, there is the match. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.